We're starting the day, grabbing a quick bit of lunch. We're gonna finish this car now. Yeah, Jasper is desperate to have a go in the back of a Twizzy. I could be wrong, but I don't think we're gonna have time to do that today. I think that's gonna be tomorrow, Jasper. Such a creature of habit I am. Right, jump out, monkey. Jasper, don't forget, this is actually a road. They have the oddest high streets around here. Cute, but odd. Now we've met up with Jonathan, we're gonna head off and see Gareth at Aquaterra. Very scary. You can't, monkey, the child locks are on. Can't put the child locks off. Yeah, but not right now. He's absolutely desperate to go in the Twizzy. Oh, we see. Today's a good day. It would, time is my enemy. Right, Jazzy, we're gonna get you out of the way so we can do this interview. Go for a little cycle, stay with Jonathan. You got your running shoes on, right? Not you. <laughs> Jonathan, you're not you. Hi, my name's Gareth Davis. Um, I've lived up in Orkney for 28 years. I work for a company called Aquaterra. Uh, and I'm also chairman of something called the Orkney Renewable Energy Forum. Oh, fantastic. I think Jonathan mentioned that to me. That's, you're, that's the body that helps promote uh, renewable energy, you know, micro-generation presumably, and, and also EVs? Yes, um, I mean, OREF was formed in 2000, so it's 17 years old, and uh, in those days we weren't quite sure what renewable energy was going to bring us, uh, but we felt that it was something that we wanted to be a part of in Orkney, and uh, there were a number, about 10 of us, that created OREF in the start, and um, it started off looking at how we could get renewable energy into the grid system, and then we had some challenges with that and we started looking at other uses of energy um, and EVs were a part of that as well as um, looking at maybe converting ferries to other forms of energy. On the way over I was thinking you know, it's only a 30 mile trip what this story really needs is to be battery powered. Yeah, it's I'd incredible. love to see that. You have no idea how quickly I would be up here to check that out. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. I mean, the, the ferry that you came on, um, it burns the equivalent of 25 megawatts of power going backwards and forwards. Um, you know, that's the scale of the engines on it. Yeah. So it's like 25 big wind turbines. So it's probably one of the biggest engines that there are on the island. So if that could be powered by renewables rather than the diesel fuel that uses at the yeah. moment, that would be a, a big bonus. I was talking with Neil yesterday. He was saying about how one of the problems is it's very difficult to export all this renewable energy that gets generated around here. He was suggesting that hydrogen might be a way to go with that. Yeah. My personal preference would be to combine the hydrogen with CO2, turn it into methane, methane, propane, maybe synthetic diesel, and then burn it, which would be a very easy way to convert the ferry. Although, I think up in Norway, they have a, a few ferries now which are battery powered, don't they? Yeah. And I, I think it's 30 miles. Is that doable with battery power? When we've looked at this route, um, the ferry that we've got at the moment isn't particularly energy efficient. It was built um, about 15 years ago before that really became a part of it. So it's almost the last of its generation. Um, so if you were building a ferry to work with electric power, you'd probably design the hull, choose a speed, a service speed that matched that demand. This ferry goes at 22 knots and to push that ferry through the water at that speed, you know, is an incredibly power hungry way of doing it. If you went slower, you know, you would probably burn half the amount of energy. That makes it half as easy then to provide an electrical solution. Mm. I think the idea of synthetic fuels is interesting because obviously you're recycling carbon through the system rather than replacing it, which is clearly better than currently burning fossil carbon. Yeah. But it's, you know, I think if we've got a chance of going the whole way and, and just displacing carbon, that's obviously better. But that transition needs to be managed carefully to, to work out how best to do it. Mm. Aquaterra doesn't work specifically with things like converting ferries, does it? It's more to do with the generation side. Yeah, so I'm a marine biologist by background and uh, I got interested in renewable energy because of the changes that were starting to happen with global warming and, um, uh, and, and the effects that was having on the environment. And I realized that if we were gonna combat that, we had to look for alternative forms of energy generation and, and different ways of using energy. So as Aquaterra, we, we look at the whole spectrum from uh, where energy resources lie, how we use energy, um, and helping that transition 
for the whole society really to a, a lower carbon existence. Is it sort of wave you specialise in or is it wave tidal or is it just basically anything to yeah. do with the sea and energy? Being based in Orkney we kind of go with what we've got. The waves, the tides are phenomenal but the waves are driven by the wind so we make use of that and on a day like today we've got plenty of solar energy so all of these different forms of renewable energy are playing their part here. Um, as Aquaterra we've really specialised in the aquatic side so the wave and the tidal but we've got drawn into the other onshore sides of energy generation and over the years what we've realised is it's not just one fits all we need a, a mixture mm. of these energy sources not only in their own right but also with the existing energy systems that we have and rely on at the present time. The energy generation side with a with a good mix, the kind of mix that you can achieve quite easily somewhere like Orkney, you know, wave, tide, wind, solar in the summer certainly, less so in the winter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, still you have all these different pieces of the puzzle and the end result is you generate plenty of power all the time. But equally though there needs to be some storage that, uh, that, that is used. Does, does the island currently have any energy storage of its own? We've been host to a couple of experiments. Um, the local utility installed uh, a one megawatt battery system at the, the, the local uh, power station. There's other uh, initiatives looking at hydrogen and EMEC and Community Energy Scotland and the council have got a project working with the local communities in ED and uh, Shappensea to, to look at that. Um, we've also undertaken studies to explore whether we could exp um, adopt things like conversion of energy to commodities, if you like, that we use locally. So fertilizer, for example, we on the agricultural land, we spread over 20,000 tonnes of fertilizer a year. Wow. That's imported from elsewhere. If we could produce that locally using renewable energy, you know, that's a win-win situation. We import all our few food, you know, uh, mm. from elsewhere. We're not a climate really where we can grow, you know, vegetables and fruits very easily. But if we had heated uh, greenhouses and things like that, that may help us with a food yeah. miles issue. So as a community we're looking for win-win solutions that can help us use the amazing energy that we can produce from renewables locally um, and at the same time we're constantly in a battle with government and the utilities and the Ofgem, the regulator for power supply to try and get better connections to the islands to yeah. allow so us to, to live the renewable dream. So that you can export more. Yes. Going briefly back to the the using the energy, I mean apart from obviously EVs which are a great way to use the energy yeah. because they will displace all that petrol and diesel and equally you won't have to ship any energy about the place, it will just flow down your cables straight into your vehicles. But apart from that, in terms of growing food, I think that's a, that's a great idea, you know having heated you know probably need lights as well for winter yeah, yeah, time, yeah, yeah. grow all, all year long, all season industrial scale growing. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. And it's one of the things that I often say is that you know human civilization is a just add energy problem. You know whatever it is that you want to do, whether it's yeah. launching rockets or moving mountains or building cities, it's it's not usually the the raw materials that are the limiting factor. It is usually the access to the energy to actually refine and use the materials that are naturally in the environment. Our society's grown up, you know, through the. 20th century it was all about centralization we had centralized power supplies that were built around the coal fields latterly the gas fields and oil fields and so our whole industrial system is set up around centralization what renewables does is it decouples you from that because the energy is everywhere and and you can then start to have micro refineries or micro power stations or micro I car powering systems so it I allows things to work on a smaller scale hi jasper have you have you finished uh tiring Jonathan out. I saw you jogging there. Good job. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk me through some of the exciting things going on around here. And uh, I wish you all the best of luck. Thanks very much, James. James. It's great to see you up here. Did you win? Yeah, I did. Fantastic. I hear there's an awesome view around here and that's what we're going to go check out now. I'm sorry, what was that? No McDonald's. No McDonald's, hurrah. And, okay, well I can sort of live with that. 
Did you say no Costa? No Costa coffee. Right, I'm leaving. <laughs> it's been fun. Another fantastically fun day. Just pushed fast asleep in the car while I took a bunch of time lapses, but it means I, I can't shoot in the car or you hear like, you get the idea. Awesome. Well, it just leaves me to say goodbye. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, remember to like it, share it, and subscribe if you haven't already. And follow me on Instagram if you don't already. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next installment of my daily vlog. Bye. Incredible weather we've been having. Mind you, I shouldn't be surprised. I mean, like Jonathan said, it's always like this. It's always like this. All the time. 365 days per year, it's like this. <laughs> Why do I get the impression the Advertising Standards Agency might have a problem with this? <laughs> See me in court.